uh, hapon. At saka yung committee uh, included in the agenda today the measures that, that, that seek to enact, amend, and repeal professional regulatory laws or uh, PRLs of various health-related professions. Alam naman natin na ang mga health professionals ang ating pinagkakatiwalaan ng ating gobyerno uh, uh, sa, sa pinagkakatiwalaan nating uh, kalusugan at buhay kaya uh, mahalaga na sa patatakma sa ating mga pangangailangan sa kasalukuyang panahon ang mga batas na nagsisilbing gabay nila sa pagganap ng kanilang profesyon. Uh, especially during these times uh, that the wrath of the COVID-19 pandemic continues to threaten the health and lives of our people and uh, this mali affects our economy and other aspects uh, of our life. We should uh, ensure that the PRLs of our health professionals are responding to the needs of the times. The measures that uh, we will be uh, discussing today have their counterpart bills that were already approved uh, on third reading by the House of Representatives. We are hoping that uh, through your support and uh, assistance, we will also be able to approve them here in the Senate. There are four clusters of bills that we, we will uh, discuss today, namely bills proposing to provide for a uh, comprehensive nursing law, bills uh, regulating the practice of uh, microbiology in the Philippines, bills regulating the practice of physical therapy, and uh, bills seeking to repeal the Medical Act of 1959. Um, at this point, allow me to uh, acknowledge the presence of the members of the uh, committee who are uh, who are with us today. Uh, Senator Pia Cayetano. Understand, Senator Bongo is also here. Is Senator Bongo here? Uh, we'll join uh, later, Padav. Okay. Okay. We, uh, with the presence of our colleagues, we now have a quorum. Um, Madami din po tayong uh, kasamahan, uh, kasamang mga resource persons ngayon. Uh, Comsec Jane, can you please uh, acknowledge all of them and indicate their respective offices or organizations for the record? May I uh, request everybody to turn on your video so we can uh, recognize you as uh, you are called. Jane? Yes, thank you very much and good afternoon. For the government, we have the Civil Service Commission, Ms. Sheila Acuña. For the Department of Budget and Management, we have Mr. Richard Amborgo, Ms. Jonas Stephanie Rodriguez, Ms. Rowena Marte. For the Department of Health, we have Dr. Gabriel Borlongan, Ms. Maria Angelica Quinto. From the Department of Labor and Employment, we have Mr. Nicanor Bon. From the Department of Foreign Affairs, we have Director Dian Christine Miranda Pastrana. From the Philippine Overseas Employment Administration, we have Director Paul Listones. From the Commission on Higher Education, we have Dr. Maria Mary Grace Lacanaria, Dr. Jacelito Villaruz, and Dr. Cheryl Peralta. From the Professional Regulation Commission, we have Commissioner Jose Cueto Jr. and the head of the CPD Secretariat, BRB Secretariat, Attorney Lobelica Bautista. We also have from the Professional Regulatory Boards of Nursing, Dr. Cafreda P. Domlao, Dr. LCT, Ms. Clarissa Noemi Titaliano, Ms. Eleanor Almoro, Ms. Marian Tantinko, Ms. Merli Salvani, Ms. Senaida Gagno, Ms. Elizabeth Lagrito, also from the, P from the PT and OT, Ms. Poliano Escaño, Ms. Bernadette Reyes, Mr. Raul Agustin, Ms. Delia Pabalan, 
from the non-government agencies consisting of the academes, professional associations, and other groups. From the microbiology, we have Dr. Virginia Cuevas of the Philippine Academy of Microbiology, Dr. Wendell L. Rivera of the University of the Philippines Institute of Biology, College of Science. We also have from the St. Luke's Medical Center Consultant Institute of Pathology, Dr. Nina Gloriani from the De La Salle University Professor of Microbiology. We have Dr. Esperanza Cabrera, as well as from the Food Safety and Hygiene Academy of the Philippines, we have Elsie Gutpayat, together with Mr. Glenn Hyde F. De La Cruz. From the Physical Therapy Group, we have Mr. Michael Gabilo of the Philippine Physical Therapy Association. On the Medicine Group, we have the Philip President of the Philippine Medical Association, Dr. Benito P. Atienza, together with Dean University of the Philippine College of Nursing, Associate Professor and Head, Ms. Jennifer Pavio. From the Philippine Nurses Association of America, we have Ms. Mary Joy Garcia Dia. From the First Nurses United, also, we have Ms. Ele Eleanor Nolasco, together with Jocelyn Andamo. From the Public Services International Philippine Health Project, Mr. Ian L. Mariano. From the Consolidated Council of Health and Allied Professions, Ms. Jennifer Frabros. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you, Jane. Uh, bago po tayo magpatuloy, uh, mayroong po ba sa ating uh, committee members ang gusto magbigay ng kanilang opening statement? Senator, Senator Pia, do you have any opening statements? Hello, good afternoon again um, to our chairman and to everyone. Yes, yes um, I do have an opening statement very quickly. Um, I'm very happy now that these hearings are being held. The health sector is uh, um, very much in need of support and uh, our way of supporting would really be, be by way of proactive legislation. So although um, the bill that I have filed is on uh, um, the Nursing Act along with um, other bills, uh, I do support the hearing for all these other measures uh, that are also part of this committee's hearing. Um, but just for the Nursing Act, um, as I said, I'm, I'm the author of Senate Bill 2409. And uh, this is very much aligned with the Sustainable Development Goals. I, for, for our guests, uh, I am the chairperson of uh, the Senate Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation and Futures Thinking. And part of what we do, aside from um, checking our compliance or our targets mm -hmm. on the Sustainable Development Goals, is also applying uh, the principle of futures thinking in all our policies. So when we think of the health sector, we need to look at a very important component of the health sector, which is the health human resource. And we know that the nurses and all the other professions that are uh, whose, whose bills are going to be heard today are a very important component of um, the health sector and the delivery of healthcare system. So my personal, um, just because, it, as I said, it is a bill that I have worked on, uh, on on uh, nurses, um, actually, I've been busy working on this for since I was a I was a newcomer in the Senate, along with our chairperson. Um, and there have been other bills in the past, but I think it's high time that we upgrade this. And so that is what I uh, will be focus focusing my attention on: um, defining the different roles of nurses, acknowledging their contribution to our country acknowledging the reality that they are in demand all over the world and therefore we also need to support the nursing education sector because the reality is uh, many of the young people take up nursing in order to look for greener pastures and that is their right no hindi naman natin pwedeng pigilan yung mga pangarap nilang ganun but our dream is also to for them to be able to find a future in their own country practicing their profession and that's why we want to strengthen um, nursing, including um, providing other alternative pathways and uh, um, career development. So the, my bill, at least, I'm not sure about the other bills, um, talk about other career paths for nurses, you know, specialization among nurses, and uh, the fact that there, 
there it is envisioned uh, in uh, the universal healthcare law that the nurses would really be a big part of the delivery of the services to the point that there may be health centers that would be manned by nurses. And so we want to prepare them for this eventual eventuality by giving uh, the appropriate uh, curriculum that would allow them to be able to handle these new challenges and, um, as I said, further their career path. But on that note, um, I can also count on me, uh, Mr. Chairman, on the other bills that uh, you will be tackling. Um, I'm hearing, but uh, this early, I would like to request uh, all our resource persons to submit their position papers to the committee. I also hereby authorizing the committee uh, secretary to uh, conduct technical working group meetings as necessary to help the committee in crafting uh, substitute bills. Our uh, first agenda for today are the bills proposing to provide a comprehensive nursing law. And I would like to turn over the floor to the member of the committee on uh, civil service who is a uh, staunch advocate of health and uh, one of the authors of Senate Bill 2409, Senator Pia Caetano, to preside over the discussions on the subject bills. But before that, I would just like to uh, deliver a statement regarding these measures. Uh, alam naman natin ang uh, iba't ibang uh, suliranin ng ating mga nurses bago po man dumating ang COVID-19 pandemic. Mababang sweldo at uh, mahabang oras ng duty. Our nurses are underpaid and overworked. And uh, this resulted to a very ironic and difficult situation of the Philippines being the top source of nurses in the whole world. And yet, uh, having the lowest number of nurses serving its population among Southeast Asian nations. Ayon sa World Health, Health Organization, WHO, ang uh, ideal nurse uh, to patient ratio ay 10 to 10,000. Uh, subalit, sa Pilipinas is 8. 8.2 per 10,000. Uh, in his State of the Nation address, or SONA, in 2020, President Duterte emphasized the need to, uh, to pass the Advanced Nursing Education Act. Kasama po ito sa mga tatalakayin natin ngayon dahil naniniwala ang inyong komite na ang pag-uunlad ng isang profesyon ay uh, nagsisimula sa edukasyon. Isang mahalagang sandigan ng uh, matatag na healthcare system ay ang pagkakaroon ng sapat at magagaling na nurses na ang kapakanan at kaunlaran ay sinusuportahan ng pamahalaan. Ito po ang uh, layunin ng mga panukala na inihain ng ating mga kasamahan dito sa Senado at sa mababang kapulungan. Uh, I know, uh, I now call... Uh, on Senator Pia to take over the discussions. Senator Pia, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We will proceed and I will keep you posted. Um, let's, let's, uh, without further ado, no, let's, let's uh, dive right into this because we have a lot of resource persons. Um, many have confirmed. I mean, let me just lay down some simple ground rules that I apply when I am chairing a hearing no, for ease of... Um, the conduct of the ask you a few quick questions just to clarify. But the idea really here is to get an overview of um, the position of various uh, sectors. No? So there's government, uh, obviously there's the nursing sector, um, both private and public, professional associations, and the academe. So that's my number one request na huwag niyo akong basahan ng inyong position paper. I will... With all due respect, I will interrupt you because um, I, I just really want to have a more engaging uh, discussion no, and highlights. Um, and then, um, um, if you have questions also from the other um, speakers, may I just uh, ask that maybe you can just type it into the box uh, so that we don't interrupt the flow. You're, you are very welcome, no? if you have your own opinions um, that may be different from some speakers, I would like to hear it. But for now, just type it into the box so that, uh, again, as I said, in the interest of time, I can uh, go through each speaker. And, um, and if I have time, I mean, I will look at the questions. If I have time to entertain it on the spot or to, to give, give you the floor or read the question, I, I will be happy to do so. 
So I think without further ado, we can proceed. Uh, we will start with the government agencies. Um, let me call on DOH, um, Dr. Petchel Tolentino. Um, after Dr. Tolentino, DOH will be Chad, and then after that will be PRC. So please be ready. Um, the, the, the three government agencies I mentioned have five minutes. Uh, after that, uh, the others would have uh, three minutes. Um, because if you can keep it short, then we can have more Q&As later, and we can even do a second round uh, to, to dive in deeper on in the issue. Um, I will ask the secretary to assist me with the time. If uh, time's up, you will hear somebody say time's up if you did not monitor the time on your own. So on that note, let's, let's proceed. DOH, Dr. Tolentino, please, uh, you have the floor. Good afternoon. Uh, for the Department of Health supports Senate Bills 395, 562, 832, 325, and 1168 to amend the Philippine Nursing Act. So I will proceed po with the following recommendations from the DOH. So number one, on the registry of nurses or roster of nurses, we recommend that the link of nurses to uh, the nurse, the link will be, uh, the roster of nurses will be linked to the National Health Workforce Registry as provided in the Universal Healthcare Act. Number two, on the advanced practice, an uh, advanced nurse practitioner, we recommend that to consider the years of experience and training acquired as another form of qualification for advanced practice nursing and align the master's degree criteria with the Philippine qualification framework that recognizes equivalencies. On the advanced uh, in practice, we would like to include as all our position papers in, we have like to include that you expand the specialized training and recognize the knowledge and skills acquired by the nurses as equivalent to the prerequisite master's degree in nursing. So, uh, recognition of the specialized nursing training. Okay, on Philippine nurse licensure examination, we recommend to include the core competencies required of beginning nurse practitioners, considering the objectives of the nursing curriculum to respond to the needs of the society and the demands of the industry. So the board, the board of nursing should determine the scope of the licensure examination, taking into consideration the nursing curriculum, the broad scope areas of nursing practices, core competencies, and other disciplines in determining the subject of, subject of examination. So on the nurse-to-patient ratio, we recommend to keep the nurse-to-patient ratio to at least one nurse for every 12 patients. By maintaining the ideal ratio to patients, nurses will be able to focus and improve on the quality of services given to patients. So in a barangay setting, the nurse-to-patient ratio shall be set at one nurse for every 10,000 population, provided that the nurse shall be the supervisors of the midwives and barangay health workers. On continuing professional development and learning development interventions, we recommend to utilize existing competency development programs of DOH and other concerned agents concerned agencies in developing the competencies of nurses. Example, the DOH Nurse Certification Program and integrate with the career progression and specialization standards for nurses. On the standardization of nurses' salary in public and pi private sectors, uh, we recommend to include the provision on mandating the equivalent entry-level salary for all nurses working in government and non-government health facilities. So to clarify the salary, if the salary of nurses working in local government will be aligned to Republic Act 6758 or the Compensation and Classification Act of 1989. So this will have a consequential effect on the rates of pay of in LGUs, which is based on income class and financial capability. We suggest explicitly amending these laws. Otherwise, discrepancies in salaries of nurses between those hired by national and local governments will not be adequately addressed. On compensation and benefits, we recommend to consider and study the possible effects and implication of the proposed compensation and additional benefits to other health professionals with similar qualifications. Consult the Department of Labor and Employment, Civil Service Commission, and Department of Budget and Management on aligning salary of nurses in private institutions with nurses in the public sector 
and identify conditions and instances when incentives and benefits shall be provided for both nurses in the public and private sector. On prohibited acts of vol volunteer nurses, provide a definition of volunteer nurse. This may be aligned with the definitions in Republic Act 9418, otherwise known as the Volunteer Act of 2007, and the Article 106 of Presidential Decree Number 442 or the Labor Co Code of the Philippines. On job description, allow flexibility in the job description to accommodate the development in the roles and responsibilities of nurses vis-a-vis -vis their positions. The delineation of responsibility could be articulated in the job description. A description of areas of practice for nurses, example, clinical, public health, or academic, may also be included. On the description of precarious work or working condition, uh, we recommend to revisit the definition of precarious work or precarious working condition, which have identified job order and contractual employment status as such. The department aims to provide permanent positions for all nurses. However, due to the current lack of plantilla positions, job orders and contract of service employment are necessary as stopgap measure, especially in times of public health emergencies. These, however, are not necessarily precarious working conditions. Nurses employed under these types of engagements must be properly compensated, similar, similar to those gainfully employed or hired under regular positions. On scholarship programs, we will recommend to include a provision on scholarship programs for the basic and graduate education on nursing and the commensurate return service agreement. All graduates from the scholarship shall serve priority areas in this country for three full years with proper compensation and benefits and good working conditions pursuant to UHCF. Lastly, on public health emergency, we recommend to include a uh, provision for a grant of special authorization during a public health emergency to expand the scope of nursing service and maximally utilize the presence and services during public health emergencies and adopt and include the World Health Organization's definition of public health emergency in the list of operational terms used in the bill. So respect, respectfully submitted, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was quite comprehensive. Um, uh, obviously, we'll need more details later on. So can you just, I, I just checked, no, we don't have a copy of that. So I took some notes, but uh, medyo marami, so hindi rin kaya ng note-taking power ko. So kindly submit it, okay? And if you want to provide details na rin in the submission, feel free to do so. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, may I now call on Ched, uh, Dr. Mila Benho. And then after Dr. Nila Bell would be PRC. Uh, and then after that, the Civil Service Commission, so you can be ready. So again, let's proceed. Sorry, at the Shed present, should I move to someone else? PRC, are you ready? Can we can we call on PRC first and then civil service be ready, please? After that is BBM. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Okay. Senator Pia Cayetano. So first let me greet Senator Bongo Pia and Senator Bongo. The PRC has already submitted its uh, position paper on the nursing bills, but uh, I would like to request uh, Madam Chairman to allow the chairperson of the Professional Regulatory Board of Nursing to provide uh, just the most important details in the position paper of the Professional Regulation Commission. Honorable LCT. Thank you very much, Commissioner Cueto. So here uh, I am going to discuss to you the salient points or overall considerations in the Bill 9389. So the current law, RA9173, is almost 20 years in existence. The developments in the past years, specifically in the pandemic and the universal health law, have significantly affected and influenced the present-day Philippine healthcare system. As such, the regulatory framework that governs the nursing profession may no longer be relevant. 
nor adaptable, nor responsive to the changing times and conditions. Thus, the call for the repeal, not mere amendments of the 2002 nursing law, is timely and much needed. Advanced practice nursing is now by word among Filipino nurse practitioners as international nursing counterparts have recognized and successfully incorporated advanced practice nurses in their respective countries, strategies to deliver health care to all their citizens as mandated in the adoption of their own universal health laws. The board thus supports the institutionalization and recognition of the advanced practice registered nurse after passing the necessary board requirements in keeping with the intent and purpose of RA number 109-12 or the CPD Act of 2016 on career progression and specialization, Republic Act number 109-68 or the PQF Act and RA number 1123 or UHC Act as discussed. The board concurs with one of the special features of the bill, mission of the board, section five, which puts special value and emphasis on the mandate of the board by affirming that the regulation of the nursing profession is a public trust. The board concurs with the bill in spelling out the career progression and specialization program for nursing and the CPS Council for Nursing that presents the different levels of nursing practice, its regulation, its critical role, and ensuring professional growth among nurses. Upon consultation with various sectors, the board and other nursing stakeholders deem that the profession is not yet ready with integration. Hence, it is not inclined to move forward this, with this proposal just yet. The board supports and grants limited authority to Filipino nursing graduates for the purpose of rendering nursing services during pandemics, epidemics, and national emergencies, provided that they are under the supervision of a registered nurse and have graduated within the last five years prior to the occurrence of the pandemic, epidemic, or national emergency. This is primarily to augment the supply of health workforce during the subsistence of a pandemic, epidemic, or national emergency. The board proposes to reduce the number of years, preferably two years from date of surrender of license within which the instatement can be petitioned for by one whose license has been revoked. The board recognizes the role of public health nurses in the delivery of essential health services through effective collaboration with the other members of the service delivery network in promoting health, preventing disease and disability, treatment of common diseases, and managing emergencies, disasters, pandemics, and epidemics. This enhances the role, scope of practice, career progression, and contribution of the PHN to the aims of the universal health care. The board likewise supports the creation of the position of the National Chief Nursing Officer in response to the need for a chief nurse instituted at the Department of Health who will focus on the development of policies and standards towards professional and organizational development and mobilization to relevantly address national epidemiologic and nursing personal supply, demand, and distribution Trends. The board welcomes the creation of the Nursing Human Resource Health Management System that consolidates and guides the analysis of nursing human resources for health data across the public and private sectors, cognizant of the large proportion of nurses across all levels of practice settings and delivery of care systems. This system ensures that the workforce complements and responds to the actual needs of the population. Likewise, this system provides for guidance in determining future needs and projections for the workforce demands that informs CHED, PRC, and other stakeholders. The board also welcomes the proposal to do away with a standard nurse to patient ratio to determine nurse staffing and recognition of the practice sensitive determinants of appropriate workforce, staffing for patient and health worker safety, that is, 
So informed by current literature, safe healthcare practice is best determined by patient equity and care demand, not solely on numbers. The proposed bill underscores safe workforce indicators and guidelines to recommend minimum safe staffing for registered nurses. Likewise, the bill specifies mechanisms to promote compliance and empowers nurses on the ground to determine safe practice needs. The board further welcomes the provision ensuring that nurses are justly compensated by stipulating the base pay for public and privately employed nurses and otherwise and other incentives and benefits. This feature is missing in the proposed comprehensive nursing law of 2015. The provision and the qualification requirements for nursing deans and undergraduate and graduate program faculty that are aligned with the current CHED guidelines and the career progression and specialization program are deemed in order. This ensures the delivery of quality education by competent, productive, and highly qualified faculty and leaders in nursing education. The board is in favor of a return service agreement provision to ensure the continuous flow of nurse professionals into practice and service of the Filipino people. And as an incident of regulation, the bill included a penal provision which imposes stiffer penalties for violations of the law. It also incorporated a clause in joining the refund of illegally collected or exacted fees and payment of unpaid salaries. The board believes that these are important aspects in the regulation of the profession and to which it also interposes no objection. The nursing practice has indeed developed and flourished into the highly sought after profession that it is today. Now is the perfect time to introduce important developments in its regulatory okay. law to make it more realistic, relevant, and responsive. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, ma'am. Um, okay, uh, we need to, I know, to, I need to be able to digest uh, your very important points better. Um, it was mentioned that the position paper was submitted, but I do not have a copy. Either it was just submitted just right now, like a few minutes before, because it has not reached me. And because uh, the two speakers who just spoke um, covered a wide range of topics, it's very difficult for me to follow without a copy of your position paper. So I will take a two-minute break and ask the COMSEC to check with all of you if you have submitted the position papers. Because I cannot take notes and ask you relevant questions. You don't have any presentation. I don't have anything. Hindi ko nasasabayan po ang inyong magagandang comments. Okay? So for us to be productive, I need to have those position papers with me so I can check off and uh, ask relevant questions. If not, then um, I will just ask you to minimize your your presentation to one minute because there's really no point because I cannot keep up with it without holding anything, without seeing anything. Now, these are very important points that you are raising, but I am incapable of following it on my own without, um, without, without copies of uh, what you are presenting to us. So, Comsec, please take over. I will come back in two to three minutes. Find, kindly find out who has position papers and those who do not have. Just limit your, your statement to two minutes because there's really no point. I'd rather just read your position papers then because I cannot come up with relevant questions uh, to clarify these statements. So, Omsek, please hand them. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Um, uh, for the record, no, uh, the, the position papers are, are, are uploaded in the Google Drive of the Senate Civil Service Library. And what we have received for the record officially are from the Professional Regulation Commission, as well as from the groups of microbiology, uh, nursing of PR Bion, or the Philippine Professional Regulation of, uh, of uh, the Boards of Nursing, as well as other uh, non-profit agency groups, just like the food shop and the rest. So if you have with you the position papers right now, 
can you please just upload this link to the Senate Civil Service at gmail.com, which is the official uh, email account of the committee, so that we be able to upload the same to our Google Drive, which is in real time, and share the same also to the senators concerned, as well as other groups members. So for those who have the uh, position papers with you, can you please submit it to the committee, to the Senate Civil Service at gmail.com? Because what we have right now are those only position papers submitted by the Professional Regulation Commission, the Board of Nursing, the uh, Microbiology Group, the phys Physical Therapy Group, uh, and the uh, food shop and other agencies, the non, the, non the, the private organizations. So for those, please, so that uh, Senator Cayetano may be able to assess and read these uh, documents. Okay. Madam Comsec, yes. um, Stella Abenohar po. Um, natanggap niyo po ba yung email namin, um, aming position statement a while ago? In email po namin, Filipino Nurses United. Can you check? Yes, we have. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay. So for the record, uh, for the understanding of all, um, these position papers are uploaded to the Google Drive of the Senate Civil Service Fiber, and you can see it. It's clustered there. So as soon as we receive these documents, we forward it to our Google Drive for everyone to see. VOH, we have not yet received your position paper pertaining to uh, hello. they're saying yeah, that you have yes that you have uh, uh, provided your statement right now so uh, uh, please sir? submit Madam, sir good afternoon po Comsec, the DOH po submitted the position paper last night in the official email yes, sir. Of the Sinabi ni, ano, ni Ma'am Jane Submit yan ni, ni Ma'am Kari po. Can you check? Okay po. Thank you po. So, ganun na ha? Please submit these position papers. Let me know. Give me a heads up din, ano? Para tawag dito, we can uh, see it once. So, are you done? Are you done with the administrative work? Can I proceed? Yes, ma'am. Uh, did, did Ched come back? I just want to check back before I proceed. Before I call on Ched, I just want to know if they're back. Because it's, we skipped Ched because of because they weren't here. They weren't responding to the call. Wala pa rin? Uh, Ched is still here. Sige. It's a few quick questions, no, sa PRC. Um, who, who will be the one responding? Is it, uh, Miss, do I, what, what, do, who's going to respond? Ma'am Honorable LCT may be requested to respond to the, some of the details that she has presented.
Sige, just a few um, questions, no? Um, uh, on on, on uh, nursing um, graduates, how many how many take the licensure exam every year? And then, uh, do you have any? I assume you have uh, what do you call that? Yung para professional um, uh, the mandatory updates. May ganun din ba kayo? Like they have in other professions. Um, and then uh, there was a mention of uh, a window to reinstate their license if it has expired. Can you just expound on that? Like how many lose their license and why would they lose it? Is it because they go abroad? Is it because they go abroad and they, they just don't pay the fees? So can you just expound on that? And then... Um, I'm not sure if you're also the one who would, who would uh, know, but uh, how many are practicing in the country and how many uh, have left? Yeah. So that's my question. Okay, those are my questions. Okay. Um, Senator Pia, I haven't heard some of your, it, it's not very clear on me on some of the questions, but I will respond on what I was able to get from your questions, Po. Um, every year, we have like, uh, on the average for the last four years, for instance, we have an output of about 10,500 nurses yearly. That is for uh, the two nurse licensure exams in June or May, as the case may be, and November for the year, so 10, about 10,500 or so, about that. Um, in the last examination that we had, there were more than 12,000 who took the exam, but only about uh, 6,086 were able to pass it. Let me read some of this. Um, 11,000, I'm sorry, that's 11,828 and only 6,086 were able to pass. So that is 51.45%. Uh, we were very lucky though in our first examination in 2021 because 64.65% passed. And so for 2021, uh, more or less a total of 11,000 nurses, to be exact, 11,094 nurses were registered. Were registered, okay. So in the past years, Previous to COVID, you said that you have about 10,000 taking the exam every year. So what's the, what was the passing percentage in the last three years prior to COVID? Uh, okay, so roughly for the last um, four years, it's about 53.09% is the average percentage for the last four years. Oh, Senator. So, bakit umakit ng 64% yung second to the last exam nyo kaya? I'm just curious. Kasi yung 51% mo in the last exam is consistent, but the other one was high. Did they have yeah. a to study? Perhaps, uh, I just want to be candid with you, Senator. Uh, perhaps that was because of the fact that we were new. Actually, um, relatively, no? Five. Four are very new, one relatively new was in the Board of Nursing who gave the exam in uh, June or July rather of 2021. Perhaps that was one uh, or the major contributory factor. You mean to say new meaning to say that the exam was different? Not really. I, I do not mean that. It's siguro because we're new and... Um, Say we're new, who's new? The, the, the commissioners? It's a new set of... New appointees. Okay. Anyway. And... I, I don't know why that would have an effect, but never mind. It's, it's not It's not really that important to me. The, I wish, I, obviously, I just want a higher passing rate. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Then would you know... Do you know, because this would really be a question for Puchet, no? But... Would you know how many graduate per year versus those who take an exam per, per year? Would you know? Would you happen to know? No, I'm sorry. 
Okay. I do not have that data, ma'am. Okay. And how about um, in terms of, so once they pass, they, they become licensed. And uh, I was asking, what are the normal causes for the expiration of those licenses? Because you mentioned something about limiting the window to two years for those that expired. Why, why would their license expire? And what would be the usual reasons? Uh, some of the licenses may have expired because the nurses are no longer actively engaged in nursing. According to the nursing workforce data so of October 2021 by the PRC, 122,000 nurses are into unspecified practice. And this might be because they are currently unemployed as nurses, or they can be deceased already, or not practicing or not working in the health sector. So perhaps they are in the BPO, so hindi hagip po yung data. Or they are undocumented immigrants, or they might have passed the NLE, but did not push through with registration, assuming they were immediately registered in the PRC system. So these are some of the reasons why uh, na expire or hindi sila nagre-renew po ng kanilang mga lisensya. Okay. And um, is there anything you can contribute? No, because obviously your expertise is limited based on your your um, your the, the description of your uh, the scope of your work. But is there anything you can contribute in terms of um, the demands of nurses abroad and how it affects? Uh, our nursing supply here. Uh, do you have, do you, PRC mismo, have any data on that? And the job opportunities that are presented to the nurses here? I'm sorry, ma'am. I don't have data on those just yet. Okay. And did you have a position, because like I said, medyo mahaba yung presentation nyo, no? So without a copy, I, I have a difficult time following every point that you raise. Very interesting points, but hindi ko digest lahat ng sabay sabay. Um, my question is, um, what what is your position, if any, on specialized practice, on acknowledge, on on uh, on recognizing specialized practice? As si DOH mentioned about um, DOH mentioned, and correct me if I'm wrong, DOH uh, recognizing the years of uh, practice in a particular area to be equivalent to um, training or, or being educated for a special practice. So I don't know if PRC has a position on that as well. Actually, uh, that, Mom Kari, do we have? I'm sound. Uh, I'm Dr. Dumla Ma'am, uh, the fo focal person for the nursing bill. Good afternoon, po. Uh, for the for the concern that you have raised about uh, from the DOH about the specialist, uh, actually, ma'am, uh, this is uh, also uh, covered in our uh, nursing bill. We recognize the specialist, uh, the nurse specialist. But they have also to undergo uh, uh, certain uh, trainings. Uh, say, for example, if they are in the maternal and child, OB and PEJA, they have to undergo a training so that they can be certified as a specialist. And then after the specialist, oh, they, if they want to go further, they, ha uh, they will be uh, credentialed as advanced practice nursing uh, nurses. But uh, for the, we start off with the general uh, nurse practitioner, and then we have the specialist. We consider the number of experiences that they have, but uh, the requirement is for them to undergo a specific training in that field of specialty. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, let's just go into that more later on. So um, I assume Ched is still not here. Has there been a change? So if I don't hear... Permission to speak? 
Who is this? Permission to speak. Ah, Dr. Mila Belho. Uh, okay, go uh, ahead. This is Mila Belho. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah. Buenos dias, Senator Pia. Hello, yes. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? So, uh, I'd like to uh, make a statement that uh, we have now just worked in and uh, we have reconstituted a panel of uh, technical panel for nursing education. And we are going to have a quick uh, revisit of this uh, position paper that we have prepared. We are officially We lost you. Are you there? Yeah. We lost you. Oh. Can everyone else hear me? Is it just her? Uh, yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Okay. Um. Uh, you. So let us just mm -hmm. ask her to come back later on. Um, may, Comsec, may, may position paper ba si, si ano, Chen, but I can at least read it and kind of understand what you're trying to say. Um, uh, for the record, we have not, uh, we have, yeah, yeah, uh, we have not received any position paper from Chen. Okay, maybe you can get in touch with her and find out if, um, they can give us a position paper uh, para at least I, uh, within the day maintindihan ko yan yung sinasabi nila um, or if they can improve their signal. Okay, so let's move on. Um, Civil Service Commission, Ms. Sheila Acuna and then after that, please be ready, DBM and then Dole. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm Sheila Acuna from the Civil Service Commission. So regarding the the Senate bills on the Philippine Nursing Act, the Civil Service Commission supports the proposed bills. Uh, however, we have we have minor comments and we will submit them once the uh, chairperson or the commissioner signs the same. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, and I, I also reminder to everyone, you know, again, I appreciate all the detailed comments, but um, we really just need, what I really need at this point, you know, to have a, a uh, to me, uh, a meaningful discussion is just general principles that you agree to, and then if there are general pr principles that you you would like to see that you have not seen in any bill, um, and uh, or or any that you have a problem with, diba? Ganun lang muna tayo ka general, kasi if you go line by line, um, that's not the, this is, today is not the place. This is the first hearing. You'll have a technical working group, um. If not next week, the following week. Okay, so reminder lang, kasi mm -hmm. I really want to get the bigger the bigger picture here. Right? That if if over and above people are supportive, what are the main concerns? Uh, ganon. So okay, um, next is DBM. Um, are you here, Mr. Richard? Ar so okay, um, next is DBM. Um, are you here, Mr. Richard Ar Amborgo? Uh, after that, Dole and then POEA and then DFA. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Um, please be informed that our Bureau already submitted our comments to the DBM DOO Senate on the various measures for discussion in today's public hearing. However, there are still concerned offices who have not yet submitted their comments as of today. So once completed, we will immediately submit the officially signed DBM consolidated position paper to this committee for consideration. Thank you. 
Okay, may I uh, inform you, DBM, um, I expect uh, DBM to be present in all the hearings, okay? Because uh, usually, minsan wala ang DBM, so I'm happy that you're here. And in the, in, the, in the hearings, in the succeeding hearings or technical working groups, we will need you there because even if you don't have any input at the moment uh, in the final analysis, I need somebody from your office to understand what we are doing so that you can uh, give a response that is um, um, aligned with what we are trying to achieve. Okay? So I expect to see you. This is noted, Madam Chair. Thank you. Salamat. Uh, next, um, Dole, um, Dr. Marco Valeros, and then after that, POE, and as I said, BFA. Dole, are you here? Dr. Madam Valeros? Chair, this is, Madam Chair, good afternoon. This is Colonel uh, Bohan. Uh, the representative from Dole. May I allow to speak? Okay, but you're choppy and sorry, what can you just tell us your position also? You're choppy, sir. Okay, now wala kayo. Just uh, uh, so clear now, but I'm sure so. Uh, the department supports the intent and objective of the bill, particularly to raise the salaries of the nurses in the private sector, commensurate to their educational attainment and the services they provide, which are critical to the promotion of health, disease prevention, as well as the delivery of healthcare services. This is an equally important issue affecting the pay of nurses uh, in the private sector as uh, as uh, the, competi the competing global compensation practices resulting in high incidence of out-migration and its impact on the quality of healthcare in the country. So the provision, Madam Chair, mandating nurses in the private sector to be paid salaries not lower than the minimum base of nurses in the public health institution is most, most welcome, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. That would be all for Dole. Okay. Um, I, I don't need your response right now, no, but um, later on in the crafting of the bill, I might need uh, Dole's uh, input also on, ano, on uh, yung, uh, work standards no? because um, I, I'm not sure if there's still ongoing concerns on the nurses in terms of yung mga uh, hours of work, um, okay na ba lahat yun? I don't know, maybe we'll hear more when we hear from the nurses' group. So let's uh, uh, await their, uh, no, their, their input later on. So if you can, if you can uh, stay here, uh, if you can con continue to be present, we'll get to them in a short while. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I see the hand of uh, Dr. Milabelco being raised. Are you ready now? If the signal is not good and you prefer to keep the video off, uh, it's okay, as long as I can hear your voice. Adan? Yes, Dr. Ho, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. A pleasant afternoon. Special greetings from Tamboanga when I started. Madam, I'd like to officially inform you that uh, the technical panel for nursing education has just uh, been reconstituted and we are uh, revisiting quickly all of the position papers that we have made and we are requesting if we can uh, submit it by Friday because we are almost done with it and we are, we are consolidating all the comments that uh, we have uh, gathered from some sectors. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, no problem with that. Uh, can you please take note of the following questions that I have, no? just initial questions. So number one is I'd like to uh, really know the profile of nursing schools, no? whether these are SUCs, uh, these are private schools, LUCs. So the profile of the schools, the passing rates of the schools, are there any commonalities like which ones 
in if if there are any commonalities uh, such that if you tell me uh, generally ang SUC ang mataas ang passing rate or ang LUC, I don't know what it is. Um, any surveys you have on uh, why are students taking up nursing? Um, I'd like you to help me with a bigger picture. How many students, what is the percentage of students taking up nursing versus other health professions? Nursing versus other professions, okay? Um, is there a, is it, is it um, uh, predominant in a certain region versus another region? Um, are there SUCs that have or have in the past um, agreements with uh, receiving countries or cities or uh, hospital institutions abroad? Um, I hope my, my team is also taking note of the questions because I'm just saying this off the top of my head, so I'm not sure if Dr. Ho and her team can catch everything I'm saying, no? But basically, I just want to see the entire picture of who are our nursing students? Why are they taking up nursing? Do they intend to stay in the country? I and mean, my question is, you know, you're going to increase the salary and I'm all for it. I'm a very strong supporter of health professionals, but um, we will never be able to, to uh, equal, you know, come close to the salaries being offered in developed countries. Malayo pa tayo. So I'd like to know what what is in it for uh, our nursing graduates to stay in the country or to come back. So yun yung picture na binubuo ko. You may not have the answer right away, but um, you you know we may we may have some information that will help us get to that, and then maybe we'll have clearer answers. So that's very, it. Lang naman for now. Very well, Your Honor. Now, all noted and well taken. Okay. Uh, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. All right. Um, let me proceed now with um, POEA and then be ready DFA. From POEA's Attorney Geraldine Mendez. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. We also have Director Paul Estor, as he would be speaking in behalf of POEA. Okay, it's Director Who. Sorry, kindly repeat the name. Paul Listones, Madam. Listones, sorry, but I am there. Paul Listones. Okay, got it. Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair, good afternoon po. Uh, I am joined by Attorney Geraldine Bendez. Ma'am, uh, when it comes to the stand of POE, uh, we will submit po our, uh, with the permission of this honorable committee, uh, we will just submit uh, our position paper, ma'am, if you will allow us to submit it sometime next week. Yeah, sure, no problem. Um, anyway, I, I, I leave it to each and every resource person here in the institution that you represent to carve out that area that affects the constituents you serve the constituents you serve no so whatever in whatever way you feel that you can contribute to helping uh, the sectors that you represent go ahead just just um just give us your position paper thank you thank you madam chair okay from dfa director miranda pastrana diane Miranda Pastrana, are you there? Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Hello. Thank you, members of the committee. Um, for the DFA, we will submit our position paper as soon as we have consolidated the comments of relevant DFA offices on the matter, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, so let's now go to the professional associations. Um, there are four of them, so we, I will call on... Ah, we have seven pala. Okay, so let me just call on the first three so you can be ready. It's coming from FNU, First Nurses United, and then after that, PNAA, and then after that, RN Task Force Alliance of Filipino Workers. So you each have three minutes. Um, uh, from FNU, Ms. Eleanor Nolasco, the president, you have the floor. Um, magandang hapon, Madam Chair, um, Senator Cayetano, and... Uh, Mr. Chair, Senator Revilla. Ako po si Maristela Abenohar. Ako po ang Pangulo ng Filipino Nurses United or FNU. Um, salamat po sa pag-invite sa amin sa hearing na ito tungkol po sa pag-craft ng comprehensive nursing law. The views and comments and recommendations 
were actually called from our consultation with our members and other nurse stakeholders in various setting of practice. May sinabit na po kaming position paper, pero uh, tututukan ko na lang po ngayong plenary yung uh, apat na important points on salaries and benefits, on security of tenure, tungkol po sa nurse-patient ratio, at saka ito pong tungkol sa uh, ibang working condition na sa tingin namin ay dapat maisama doon po doon sa mga dapat uh, bantayan na hindi dapat mangyayari. So anyway, um, ang iba po na detalye ay nandun na po sa aming position paper. Uh, simulan ko po usapin ng salaries. Una po kami ay nagpapasalamat na uh, itong tungkol sa pagpapantay ng sahod ng nurses in public and private sector have been reiterated in the Senate Bills 260-1168 and 2446 na ang entry salary po dapat ay ang uh, salary grade 15 na assigned amount. No? Sa ngayon po, ayan po ay 35,000 a month. Yun po yung uh, for nurse one position. At uh, dapat ito po ang uh, sahod din ng nasa private sector. Uh, saying this, kami po ay nalungkot doon sa Section 39, Article 4 ng House Bill 9389 kung saan sinasabi po doon na ang implementation daw po ng entry salary na equivalent sa SG15 sa private sector will be done in three tranches, three years ang effectivity from the passing of the Nursing Act. Ang, kapag ito po kasi ang sinunod natin, ang mangyayari po dito, ang atin pong mga nurse, nurses in the private sector ay magsisimula sa sahod na kung ito po ay maipapatupad instead na 537 ipapatupad instead na 537 a day or 11,814 a month ay magiging 19,542 for 2022. Samantalang yung counterpart niya sa government ay 35,000 na. Tapos po sa 2023 next year, 27,000 lang sa private sector at mas mataas na uli sa ano sa public sector. In other words, in madidefeat po yung purpose na dapat pareho po sila ng tinatanggap. Given na pareho po sa sila ng gawain, pareho po ng uh, job description, ika nga, at pareho din po sila ng mga requirements pag nagsimula. Um, kaya ang aming proposal, uh, Madam Chair po, is that Uh, for the implementation sa private sector, we propose that the government subsidize or provide subsidy to small and medium scale private health facilities in the implementation of entry salary of nurses in the private sector for the first three years. Um, ikalawa po, um, tungkol naman po sa security of tenure, kami ay uh, sumusuporta sa House Bill 9389, ganun din po sa Senate Bill 2409 and South, uh, Senate Bill 2446, kung saan naka-state po na all forms ng contractualization ng nurses ay bahagi ng tinatawag na precarious work condition that must be prohibited and penalized. Uh, should this be undertaken by any public or private health facility. Um, so kami po ay naniniwala na any form of contractualization such as job order, contract of service, memorandum of agreement, or nurse deployment program ay hindi dapat because nursing is vital and essential 24-hour round-the-clock function of saving lives. Um, so, tutulan din po namin yung outsourcing ng nursing work. No? Kasi dapat po ay meron silang uh, proactive planning ng kinakailangang manpower sa bawat health facility. Pangatlong point na po ako, tungkol po sa mga benefits. Doon po sa mga uh, Senate bills na meron tayo, ay uh, wala pong mention ng Magna Carta implementation. So, kami po sa FNU, ay nagpo-propose na i-implement ang monetary and non-monetary benefits ng Magna Carta of Public Health Workers. Ito po yung Republic Act 7305 para sa mga nasa public sector. Ganun naman po, uh, dapat meron pong isang statement under benefits na uh, dapat i-implement din ang isang uh, similar Magna Carta of private health workers. Sa House of Representatives, Madam Chair, ay sinimulan nila ito. Merong House Bill 5184. 
Ito po yung uh, Mag Magna Carta of Private Health Workers filed by Bayan Muna Party List noong October 22, 2019. And uh, we pray na sana meron itong counterpart sa Senado. Uh, pangatlong benefit na gusto naming maidagdag doon sa ating nursing law is the implementation of public health emergency benefits due for health workers both public and private sector, para hindi po palaging reactive kung mayroong isang uh, public health emergency like pandemia. Dapat po may definite na, na mga benefits na tatanggapin ang mga health workers at kasama po dyan ang nurses. Um, next po ay tungkol po sa safe nurse patient ratio. Um, kami po ay sumusuporta sa House Bill 260, 1168, and 2446 na sinasabi nilang dapat may isang nurse sa bawat barangay. We have 42,000 barangays in the country at yan din po ang aming pangarap na magkaroon talaga ng isang public health nurse ang bawat barangay. Sa ngayon po, mas marami tayong mga midwife at barangay health workers at kulang po tayo sa mga public health nurses, kagaya rin po ng mga doktor. No? At sinusuportahan din po yung uh, namin ang uh, recommendation doon sa tatlong uh, Senate bills na may isang nurse dapat, at least one nurse in every school, at at least one nurse in every industrial establishment. So in terms of sa mga hospital po, ang proposal ng FNU po, sa regular ward ay one nurse for eight patients. Ito po yung uh, um, mungkahi ng ating mga nurses na nandoon po sa mga ospital. Sa ngayon, ang DOH standard po ay one nurse for 12 patient. At sana lagi pong bantayan na sa ICU, one is to one po ang sinusunod. Um, panghuli na lang po, um, tungkol po ito sa uh, precarious work condition. Meron po kaming apat na situation na gusto naming maidagdag doon na ipagbawal din ang illegal dismissal and unjust termination of employment. Pangalawa, any form of diminution in salaries, benefits, and incentives. Pangatlo po, any form of demotion in rank, duties, responsibilities, whether or not it will result in diminution of salaries. At panghuli po, any form of threat or unlawful acts against nurses' basic right to organize or join any association or union of nurses and health workers or outright disrespect of the nurses' right to join peaceful concerted actions to defend and protect their basic rights and welfare and to obtain redress of their grievances. Um, Banghuli po, meron akong dalawang katanungan, Madam Chair. Uh, una po, gusto naming malaman, pwede po ba na makonsider sa gawain o responsibility ng uh, Board of Nursing ang tungkol po sa pagkakaroon ng isang centralized database for nursing professionals. Sa ngayon po, Pag pinag-uusapan ang mga data or statistics sa nurses, iba-iba po ang uh, sinasabi ng iba't ibang uh, institution like DOH, uh, BON, Department of Labor. So iba-iba po. Uh, since every time nagre-renew naman po ng license, ay meron po doon pinipirmahan kung saan sila nag-work at saka uh, iba pang information, baka maaari na in monitoring kung nasaan po ang ating mga nurses dahil meron na silang baseline registry of our nurses na pumasa sa board exam, ay malaman din natin ilan ang current na nurses na nasa public at ilan na nasa private sector. Ilan na nasa clinical practice, ilan na nasa teaching, ilan na nasa public health, at iba pa. Huling katanungan po, um, mayroon pong section sa huli ang ating lahat ng Senate bills na implementing agencies at nakareiterate po doon na DOH ang mag implement nito, no? both in public and private. Ang akin pong katanungan, pwede ho ba na under po sa definition of terms ay i-define talaga anong ibig sabihin ng public, anong ibig sabihin ng private. Kasi po, may raming pagkakataon na pag, pag naglalabas ang DOH ng mga polisiya, hindi ka agad-agad tinatanggap, lalo na pag nasa local government units. Kasi sinasabing, that's only good for DOH hospitals or, or other uh, LGU facilities na under pa rin sa DOH. But for LGUs, that will not be applicable. So, isa lang naman po ang ating kagawaran ng kalusugan. Uh, Kung baga, dapat siya yung overall. Ngayon, ang tanong po namin ay, maaari po ba na i-define talaga kung anong ibig sabihin ng public sector? Kasi yung halimbawa po yung mga 
step ed nurses natin ay lutang na lutang din po sila. Nakikita nila minsan na hindi sila kasama. Hindi sila nagfi-fit doon sa ilang sa mga nilalabas na mga policies ng pamahalaan. Uh, yun lamang po magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Thank you, thank you, you raised a very good point. So actually, nag-exceed kayo ng time, but uh, I wanted to hear all of the points that you raised. So thank you very much. And of course, you'll be participating no, in the future um, uh, hearing so that we can uh, go in deeper in sa mga concerns nyo. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so next is uh, PNAA. Um, this is uh, the president is Mary Joy Garcia Dia. And then, please be ready after that, RN Task Force Alliance of Filipino Workers and Consolidated Council of Health and Allied Professions. So, PNA, PNAA now. Maraming salamat. Uh, magandang umaga dyan sa inyo. Mag Gabi na dito sa New York, but uh, I am able to um, join you because I this is really important from our perspective on behalf of the Philippine Nurses Association of America. Thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, we have not read through thoroughly the uh, different Senate bills, but I do agree with all the proposals that I have heard so far. We will be posting our position paper uh, hopefully next week, but from what I have gathered in terms of the expansion of the Nursing Practice Act, we support the idea of advancing the Practice Nurse Act in the Philippines, particularly in supporting the professional development of our nurses. So this way it could alleviate the need of primary care, primarily in rural areas where we all know uh, are limited in terms of access and also in addressing their healthcare needs. Uh, at the same time, we also are in agreement with supporting a, a fair, equitable salary for our nurses. We all know that that's the driving factor in terms of why nurses leave the Philippines. So providing them with what is appropriate and leveling the field. So this way, nurses can have better choice and better options on the type of employees and employment that they would want to uh, avail of. Uh, I think our focus also would like to uh, address the um, potential of the shortage because this is happening globally. Uh, even here in the United States, we are in critical shortage and we anticipate that there's going to be increased labor migration, not just from the Philippines, from but from other major supplier of nurses like India and other countries. So um, we hope that we will continue our partnership with uh, POAA in addressing a fair, equitable contract because we all know that we could not stop the nurses decision to leave the country, but at least that they will be offered um, a fair and ethical contract. Um, in terms of retention, there are other uh, ways um, that government, Profit and nonprofit organizations can, up, can come up together in improving the plight of our nurses. Just like here, we are all undergoing psychosocial and emotional impact of the pandemic. So I think expanding what the benefits of the nurses would help them to be retained in the workforce. Uh, another thing that I have noticed is how do we increase the pipeline? Because Although there is a um, shortage, we know that there will still be an increase in the education of nurses. But with the pandemic, this could be a deterrent with the future of nursing. So I would suggest that the uh, committee will consider developing programs at an early uh, phase in terms of promoting nursing in the high school level. So this way they could be prepared in terms of considering the profession. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you for your perspective now coming from PNAA. For those who are not familiar, it's Philippine Nurses Association of America. Yeah, I do agree for professions that we authorities, <coughs> um, they should really be introduced um, even in the senior high level. 
But what we need to discuss in more details really is, um, of course, you, I'm sure you would understand, even though you are the nurses based in America, that our priority is the nurses based in the Philippines, yeah. no? Um, without um, limiting the options, I think you said that also available to Filipinos, they, they are obviously free to travel and to choose to explore or migrate for that matter. Um, the primary concern of this committee would be the a healthy and sustainable um, health workforce in the country. But the demand abroad is a given, like you said, no, the demand is really there. So perhaps uh, in the future hearings, what we can probably discuss are um, uh, the perspectives that you can bring on how we can come up with creative solutions on this sustainable, on a sustainable, um, in a sustainable manner, because uh, the Philippines will not survive without our health human resources. And the better they get, the, be the more that they would be in demand in other countries, diba? So it's kind of like a no-win situation uh, for the Filipino people who who um, really uh, rely on the care of not just the nurses, but the rest of the healthcare, the, the rest of the professions that make up the healthcare force. So it's really a balancing act that um, we need to achieve here. And we will uh, continue to look forward to your input um, uh, maybe we will we will dedicate a hearing on that no on the um, sustainable uh, supply side of the human health professions because um, it's really something that has to be tackled also on that. So again, so yeah, thank you very much for that, um, President Mary Joy Garcia Diaz. Um, let's now go to RN Task Force Alliance of Filipino Workers, Miss Clarissa. Italiano, and then after that, we read the Consolidated Council of Health and Allied Professions. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we have not yet um, prepared our uh, position papers. Together with the PSI and with, with Ms. Jen, we will submit our position papers after this hearing, ma'am. Okay. Because meron pa po kasi mga approval from our confederations. Again. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Ma let, let me now take the opportunity to uh, welcome um, the chairman on the Committee on Health, Senator Bongo, who I believe would like to give his opening statement or a statement. Thank you. Good afternoon uh, to my uh, fellow senators here, lahat po ng ating mga resource persons and everyone in attendance, kahit na sa ibang uh, bansa. Uh, sa lahat po ng mga health workers, uh, musta po kayo? At uh, dito lang po kami at ang magtrabaho uh, po para sa inyo. Thank you for allowing me to make a uh, short manifestation. Would like to express my sincere gratitude to the committee for taking up this important measure today. Napaka-importante po ng measure na ito upang mas uh, lalong uh, paitingin ang nursing education program sa ating bansa. Kilala po ang mga Pilipino nurses dahil po sa likas na kakayanan, kalinga at uh, manasakit na ipinapakita ng mga Pilipino sa kapwa-tao. Sa totoo lang po, halos lahat po ng pamilya ay may contribution sa mga, na, at least uh, may nurse talaga sa pamilya. Even ako, halos sa pamilya natin, pinsan, kapatid, meron talagang uh, nurse. At dahil nga po mahusay ang ating mga kababayan, lalong tumataas ang demand para sa Filipino nurses sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo, ito po ang dahilan kung bakit napakalaki ang nagiging ambag ng Filipino nurses sa ating uh, ekonomiya. Pagamat uh, hinahanap-hanap ng mga dayuhan ang gagandang katangian ng ating uh, Filipino nurses, yung education program po uh, natin ay maaari pang uh, ma-improve dahil nakapokus lang po tayo sa bare minimum o pag-produce ng graduates na agarang ipapadala sa abroad o isasabak na sa iba't ibang uh, mga lokal na hospital. Sa ngayon, walang uh, oportunidad ang mga Pilipino nurses para palawakin ang kanilang kakayahan at sa uh, kaalaman upang uh, maging galubhasa sa kanilang napiling profession. That is why there is a need for a more uh, standardized and advanced nursing education program that will establish uh, both a solid foundation and higher learning for our nurses 
if only to allow them to gain better career opportunities and become more competent in their craft, uh, both locally and abroad. Should this measure be considered, our country will be able to produce more competent uh, nurses who may have the option to specialize uh, in various uh, areas of their field. This is indeed uh, very timely as our country and the entire world struggle to strengthen the medical frontliners amid the COVID-19 pandemic. More importantly, this will uh, also benefit the entire healthcare system with the competent nurses manning the hospitals. Patients can rest easily, uh, can rest easy knowing that they are being provided the best medical care possible. Not only this, even the families of the patients will feel more at ease knowing that their loved ones will receive care from uh, highly trained nurses. Kapakanan po ng ating mga nurses at ng ating mga mamamayan ang aking uh, tanging uh, layunin. Once we pass this important measure, uh, there is no question that our nurses, patients, and society as a whole will uh, reap the fruits of our efforts. At uh, sisingit ko na lang po uh, sa lahat po ng ating mga healthcare workers, uh, of course, nurses, kayo po yung mga frontliners. Maraming salamat po sa inyong sakripisyo sa panahon ngayon. Kayo naman po nakakaalaman sa laban na ito. Uh, pakiusap ko lang po sa inyo, uh, tulungan po natin ang ating mga kababayan, especially yung mga pasyente po. Huwag po nating uh, pabayaan. Kami naman po dito sa Senado, mga trabahante po sa gobyerno, ay handang sumuporta po sa inyo sa abot ng aming uh, makakaya. At uh, paglalaban po namin, dapat ibigay po sa inyo ang nararapat na para po sa inyo. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Senator Go. Um, let's now proceed. Um, let me call on Consolidated Council of Health and Allied Professions, Ms. Jennifer Fabros, who is the president. After that, please be ready. Alliance for Health Workers and then the Public Services International Philippine Health Project. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Um, to Senator Pio Cayetano and Senator Bongo, um, good afternoon. Um, first and foremost, we would like to thank the committee for inviting us over to um, give our insights no, regarding the proposed measures on nursing profession. Uh, the Consolidated Council of Health and Allied Professions, together with the Public Services International, uh, Project Health Committee and the uh, RN Task Force welcomes the filing of various legislative measures seeking to amend or repeal Republic Act 9173, otherwise known as the Philippine Nursing Practice uh, Nursing pra Nursing Act of 2002. <clears throat> we support these measures for it will institute reforms to further protect and develop the nursing profession, as well as restructure the scope and practice of nursing in the country ensure competitiveness, provide a better and safer work environment, uplift the dignity of our nurses with just compensation, benefits, and incentives, promote decent work, and prohibit precarious work conditions. For the consideration of time, I would just like to reiterate our position, strongly supporting the six key provisions stipulated in the proposed measures, particularly in Senate Bills 2409, Senate Bill 2446 and House Bill 9389. <clears throat> to wit, um, salary and compensation, nursing human resource for health ma management system, nursing staff complement, non-diminution of benefits and incentives, refund and compensation, prohibited acts and penal provisions. I would just like to put emphasis under um, salary and compensation, the coverage for public sector and private sector, for the public sector, um, we hope to include uh, those nurses working in our national government agencies such as the DOH and DepEd, um, our GOCCs or government controlled and owned co corporations, for our LGUs, our local government units, and just in case for the LGUs there will be a conflict with Republic Act 7160 or the local government code of 1991, Kasi meron pong PS cap dyan or PS limitations. That's why they cannot um, provide the salary grade 15 um, compensation for their nurses. Um, we'd like to remind everyone that we also have Republic Act 7305 or the Magna Carta of Public Health Workers. 
in which Section 19, Letter B, Equality Scale, um, salar, um, Equality in Salary Scale, I would like to um, mention that it states the salary scale of public health workers whose salaries are appropriated by a city, municipality, district, or provincial government shall not be less than those provided for public health work workers of the national government provided that the national government shall subsidize the amount necessary to pay the difference between the received by nationally paid and locally paid health workers of equivalent positions. Marami po sa LGUs ang hindi po kasi nakakatanggap ng salary grade 15 and that's because of the uh, budget no of the LGUs kaya sana po no um meron tayong magna card of public health workers at sana po ma-implement po ito. For the private sector, sana hindi lang po maisama yung mga nasa private hospitals or private um, health facilities, but also those in, um, in service establishments or industrial establishments, yung ating pong mga company nurses and occupational health nurses. <clears throat> um, just to share, Madam, no, sa, Madam Chair, kanina po nabanggit ng Department of Local, uh, of Local Employment, DOLE, na Labor and Employment, na dapat commensurate no um, yung salary po ng ating nurses um, just to share po madam chair uh, sa isang tertiary hospital po di uh, private po no private hospital in Quezon City ang um, entry level po ng isang nurse ay kasing halaga lang din po ng entry pay po ng uh, isang orderly no? so pareho po sila pero ito pong nurse lisensyado ano po um, nasa 16,000 po ata yan. At yung pag-angat po ng kanilang mga salary, depende pa po sa CBA nila. No? So it's high time po na ma-include talaga ang ating private health um, nurses um, para po uh, hindi po sila mapag-iwanan. And lastly, Madam Chair, uh, we would like to know no, the wisdom of the authors, which I believe isa po kayo doon, Madam Chair, yung sa Senate Bill 2409. Regarding po the inclusion of um, Section 63, which is the job um, splitting, po, uh, job sharing. Kasi po sa House Bill 9389, ang job splitting naman po is under prohibited acts. Ayan. So lastly, no? in conclusion, for the longest time, our nurses have been neglected and marginalized. With the global health crisis brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, the plight of our nurses has been clearly highlighted. We can no longer afford to undervalue and underfund the nursing profession. It is in this regard that I appeal to our dear legislators to enact these nursing bills without, without much focus on the cost, but rather the value of our Filipino nurses. People over profit, value over cost. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Thank you very much for that, um, Ms. Ms. Fabros. Again, like I said to the others, no, we would be happy to have you continually join us in the hearings to come uh, so that we can uh, put into for, um, specifics uh, the the observations and the comments that we made. Thank you. Um, next is uh, Alliance for Health Workers, Mr. Robert Mendoza, uh, the President, and then like I said, be ready, the Public Service International and then Philippine Hospitals Association. Wala ba si ano, Mr. Robert Mendoza? Are you not here, sir? Let me move on then. Uh, the Public Service International Philippine Health Project, Mr. Ian Mariano. And then actually, um, yeah, after that is Philippine Hospital Association and then be ready, uh, UP College of Nursing. So... <laughs> Yes, magandang uh, hapon po, Mama Madam Chair. No? Uh, ako po si Ian Mariano, ako ang Sabidyo Secretary ng uh, PSI. At uh, kasama ko po no? sa aming uh, grupo, yung uh, 
bago lang nasalita si Sis Jen at saka sa RM Task Force. So uh, we would like to uh, um, inform the body that we will uh, submit the consolidated uh, position paper po. So hindi ko na masyado i-take yung time ng iba para makapag-share uh, ng kanilang mga views on this uh, nursing bills. No? Sapagkat uh, nagkaroon na po na isang magandang uh, paghahanay no? o pag-present si uh, Ms. Jen sa position ng PSI at ng aming mga affidavits. Maraming salamat po. Okay, thank you for that. Um, and then Public Hospitals Association, Dr. Edmund Lopez, sir, are you there, the president? Dr. Lopez? Okay, we will call on uh, Dr. Lopez later. Um, let me call on uh, UP College of Nursing, Ms. Jennifer Pavio. Are you there? Are you yes, there? Madam Chair. Good afternoon. Okay. My apologies. I will not turn on my camera anymore in the interest of conserving my internet bandwidth. Okay, no problem. Um, so although the UP College of Nursing does not uh, will not provide any position paper, we do echo and support the provisions pertaining to um, evidence-based determination of nurse, patient, and staffing based on acuity and not necessarily on beds. But as uh, stated in, in uh, the House bill proposed here by the uh, PR Board of Nursing, that uh, apart from determining the acuity and the regular examination of staffing ratios, the bare minimum for safety should be 1 is to 10, at least for general wards. In addition, we support the statements or the provisions written for advanced practice nurses and ensuring adequate training and preparation for nurses to pursue specialization in compliance with the career progression program proposed by the PR Board of Nursing and other nursing uh, organizations. And finally, we support the uh, provisions pertaining to the creation of a position for the uh, National Chief Nursing Officer. Uh, that is all, uh, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you for that. Um, next is the Philippine Nurses Association, um, Melbert Reyes, the President. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you po for recognizing us. Uh, Melbert Reyes po from the Philippine Nurses Association. Poorer countries around the world are facing worsening staffing shortage of nurses as richer Western countries lure them amid it's a surge of Omicron fueled wave of COVID-19 infections, the International Council of Nurses said. And we know po that Filipino nurses are the choice of the world. That's why we are the number one exporter of nurses. Uh, of nurses. Reforms is a must to improve and enhance nursing profession in the country since the existing law of RA 9173. Many provisions no longer relevant to the present state of the Philippine nursing and nurses. If the bill would be enacted, it would institute reforms. At po yung mga salient points that we wanted to support. First is the improvement of welfare of the professional nurses. Kay rami na pong sinakripisyon ng ating mga nurses upang maglingkod sa kapwa natin Pilipino. Madalas ay naaabuso. Pero tuloy pa rin ang servisyo kahit na kulang ang proteksyon nila. Mababa ang sweldo at malayo sa mga mahal, mahal nila sa buhay. Kaya nga minsan ay bayani kong ituring ang ating mga Pilipino nurses but sila po ay tao. Nurses are human, not angels, neither superheroes. We have the same needs and rights as everyone else. We are skilled, knowledgeable, highly educated professionals who provide people-centered holistic care. Kaya naman po, we support equal and proper implementation of entry salary, particularly salary grade 15 to both public and private healthcare institutions, not just hospitals. But in effect, we dreamt of a future where nurses earn a salary that is just, that commensurate their services and sacrifices. We dreamt that nurses in the future go out of the country by personal choice and not forced because of circumstances. Second one is the advanced practice nursing. True career progression and equivalency to play a significant role in the implementation of mental health care law. 
nurses are the solution to rapid and cost-effective expansion of quality universal health care. This means that we need to expand frontline services, particularly in primary health care, through the development of innovative and sustainable nurse-led models of care. This is why PNA strongly supports the movement to open opportunities for nurses to bring health healthcare to the doorstep of every Filipino people through advanced nursing practice. Being experts in health promotion and illness prevention, nurses which will lower the cost of healthcare and will have access to it whenever they need to achieve their optimal health. We should consider strengthening public health nurses as a key to a healthier future and better health outcomes in envisioning the future of healthcare. We believe that investment to nursing is an investment to public health too, bringing value to population health management. Number three is we also support the provision that restructures scope of nursing practice by providing for certification and specialization. Next is the chief nursing officer. It's a dream. The nursing community should have a voice up there where the decision for health is being made. Supportado po namin ang pagtutulang na magkaroon ng chief officer na magiging daan upang buksan ang madilim na katotohanan na nararanasan nating mga nurses, security of tenure, job orders, and contractualization. Sana po yan ang luyan ng aming malabanan sa pamamagitan ng provisyong ito na pagkakaroon ng isang representative sa aming hanay sa pinakamataas na ahensya ng gobyerno na nangangalaga sa ating kalusugan. Good working conditions, positive practice environment, and decent jobs should be highly taken into consideration. Nurse to population ratios have been found to be unresponsive to stopping needs of geographically isolated and disadvantaged area. Yan po ay isang comment sa, sa chat section dito. And uh, the WHO supports an evidence-based approach called WISN, Workload Indicators for Stopping Needs as Basis for Stopping. We can use this for Our call is for all in authority to help all nurses working in the government or private sector by responding to nurse, nurses' demands of fair treatment. Nurses need to be compensated now. The PNA would like to thank the good senators behind all the Senate bills that look into the con conditions of Filipino nurses now. Thank you for recognizing the need to uplift the nursing profession in this country. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Thank you very much for that. Um, and I think this might be the last person unless merong iba pang hindi, ano, tinawag na hindi na ngayon lang dadating. Um, from Philippine Medical Association, Dr. Benito Atienza, the President of the Association. Good afternoon po, Madam Chair. Uh, there are for uh, ano lang po for our comments and suggestion. In Section Four of the proposed law, it is stated the Integrated National Professional Organization for Physicians or INPAP shall be created. There is no need for the creation of this entity. What we need is to be done is merely for the PRC to recognize instead of to create the Philippine Medical Associations and INPAP. Number two, creation of the Medical Education Council when there is already a commission on higher education. Then number three, section 27 creates the postgraduate Medical Education Council. As previously stated, there is no need for this body. This is just an additional expense on the part of the government. Specialty societies have performed the task of associated with certifying examination and these have been accepted by the public. What should be done is that the PRC should confer recognition on specialty societies who can give certifying examinations. Once the doctor pass, passes the certifying examination given by specialty societies, the INPAP or the PMA and the PRC should just recognize the doctor as a specialist. Number four in section 51, it is stated that the PRC and the board of and the board shall recognize INPAP, and we are in favor of this. What should be done in just recognition is an existing association, just PMA, is and not a creation. Then in section 54, 
the failure of an ID is an a criminal offense punishable by imprisonment of one year to five years or a fine of 200,000 to 500,000 or both. The crime of no ID should be deleted. That's all, Madam Chair, for the PMA. Thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, as um, I think I mentioned in my opening statement, and uh, I will repeat it, uh, we want to ensure that the um, tackling of this nursing act uh, is um, consistent with our overall uh, desire to strengthen the health profession. So we really welcome the uh, participation of PMA and uh, other um, health professionals in this entire process. So I hope you'll continue to be a part of this as well, sir, and as we continue to go on. Okay, so um, if you all notice, no, um, either some, well, there are some groups who were not ready to with their statements. Uh, there were some who presented quite detailed uh, observations, and then there are some that gave general overviews. I think that is enough for today. Um, because what we then need to do is really go dive into the nitty gritty. Um, so please, uh, um, I will ask our POMSEC to be in touch with you kung ano yung base bill na gagamitin natin kasi medyo nine bills ito and um, mahirap yata na I will ask you to comment on each and every bill. But on that note, you are more than welcome to highlight provisions of certain bills that you that you like no kung may magagandang provisions that you and I, I noted that the earlier speakers pointed out certain bills uh, that had provisions um, that they supported okay lang yun but to for an easy transition uh, into the main work which is the drafting of the final committee report we will probably choose a base bill to work with and of course I have a bill so the chances are it will be my bill because as uh, being the person who is now um, heading this, I am obviously more knowledgeable on the bill that came from uh, my office. So, but, but we'll see. We will make that determination later on in the POMSEC. We'll be um, advising you. So please be ready. Um, we have a, a very uh, long week ahead um, kami sa Senate. So I'm not sure if I will call for another hearing or TWG, TWG next week. It is possible though uh, for a Thursday, but not yet certain. Um, but please be ready. Uh, and then if not next week, then it will be the following week. Okay? So um, is there anyone who wants to make a quick comment? Pahabol, 30 seconds. Pwede pa na, Madam so Chair. So you will still have more time. Madam Chair, from Chen. Sure. Go ahead. Um, this is Hazel Mendoza po from Shed Legal Legislative Service. We would just like to manifest some points po. Uh, generally, the Shed supports the intention of the measures as these are aligned with the trust of universal health care law. However, as we would need more time to deliberate and review specific provisions relating to education and proposed administrative structure, we would prepare and submit our official position paper on the matter po. But our technical ex experts po are present here today to provide inputs and opinion but the official position paper po we will submit po as soon as possible Ms. madam chair po thank you po okay well i suppose you will be coordinating with um dr mila belho no kasi siya yung alam kong ano nyo so dalawa na kayo nagsalita for chen so coordinate na lang kayong dalawa from for chen yes po all right. Is there anyone else? Okay. So on that note, thank you very much. Um, if we need uh, information before the next hearing, we will also reach out specifically um, to, to specific resource persons who we feel might have the information mm -hmm. that we're looking for. Uh, I will just suspend this hearing for today. Maraming salamat for your time, everyone. Please take care and stay safe. Maraming salamat po.
very uh, interesting discussion of the uh, nursing bills. Uh, talagang marami po tayong dapat uh, isaalang-alang sa pagbabalangkas ng panukalang batas na ito and it is uh, important uh, to ensure that uh, our proposed measure will be proactive and uh, responsive to the needs of our nurses. Kaya magtulungan po tayo and I am uh, instructing at itong ating uh, committee secretary uh, to conduct TWG uh, meetings uh, for this purpose and let this uh, serve as an uh, invitation para po sa inyong lahat, sa ating mga resource persons to uh, participate in the said meetings. And uh, let us now proceed to the next uh, items in, in our agenda. The, the next cluster for discussion are the bills re regulating uh, the practice of uh, microbiology. Okay, microbiology is a very important branch of science that is uh, crucial in ensuring the life of safety of all living organisms, most especially human. This is because of its uh, indispensable role in the various aspects of our existence, such as food production, pharmaceutical environment, and many others. Dahil po dito talagang mahalaga na magkaroon ng batas na mag-regulate ng propesyon na ito upang uh, siguruhin ang kalidad at uh, kakayanan ng mga professionals mula sa edukasyon hanggang uh, licensure exams at uh, practice. There are measures pending before the committee proposing to uh, regulate uh, the practice of microbiology in the country. Nice po naming uh, marinig ang posisyon at mga suggestion ng ating mga resource persons tungkol dito. If uh, the PRC has a has presentation or discussion regarding this measure, let us hear from them first. Uh, may I call on Mr. Uh, uh, Chairman Pilando. Chairman, are you there? Kumusta na po kayo? Nandiyan pa ba? Hello, Chairman? Mukhang, ano, nakamute or... Jane? Jane? Can you hear me? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, nandiyan ba si Chairman uh, Pilando? Um, a while ago, but uh, the other board members also are here. Commissioner Cueto, Attorney Baudista, who is the head of the PRB board, oh, may... uh, is here. Okay. Sige, pa pwede natin siguro silang pag... Uh, pa pwede natin silang pakinggan. Uh... Yeah. And the other board members of the PRC for microbiology. Please state your name. Commissioner... Please state your name. Mukhang wala na rin ah. Baka nag... Uh... Sige, one minute suspension. Proceed. Thank you, sir. I would like to read the position paper of the Professional Regulation Commission on the proposed Microbiology Act. The Professional Regulation Commission supports the intent of this honorable body to pass a progressive bill that will regulate the practice of microbiology in the country. As emphatically explained in the explanatory note, the study of microbiology touches upon various processes that affect directly or indirectly biological and non-biological aspects of life on Earth. This makes it imperative for the state to ensure that those engaged in such field of practice are subject to reasonable government regulation to protect public interest. In commenting on legislative proposals to regulate new professions, the PRC is keen on looking at potential overlaps 
or encroachments on the professional practice. This case in particular, where microbiology is considered part and parcel of the practice of medicine, veterinary medicine, medical technology, agriculture, pharmacy, and food technology, among others, as stipulated in Section 27 of the Bill. Thus, the recognition of the practice of other existing professions, as well as the exclusion of clinical microbiology from the scope and definition of medical microbiology were duly noted. But it would have been better, though, if the law itself will identify the professional activities of microbiologists that are deemed exclusive and those not, not exclusive to it and which may be legally undertaken by other professionals. Example, marketing or microbial and microbial-based products and the practice of public health microbiology and or provide for a clear delineation in the scope of practice of microbiology vis-a-vis -vis other professions. Further, the PRC, in consultation with concerned professional regulatory boards, hereby respectfully submits its other comments, recommendations, on the proposed microbiology bill as follows. Number one, section five, on the creation and composition of the professional regulatory board for microbiology. The PRC interposes no objection on the proposed composition, but please note though that the PRC at the moment is under general direction and coordination of the Department of Labor and Employment by virtue of EO number 565 amended by EO number 565A and not under the office of the president. Sections five and six on the qualification of chairperson and members of the board. Uh, the proposed qualification of the board chairman and members must have at least 10 years of practice in microbiology of which at least five years must be in the academe. Note, at least specific qualification was split into two separate provisions of the bill. For ease of reference and to avoid confusion, these two related qualifications should be written together under a single section of the bill. An additional ground for this qualification under Section 6 is that the board nominee must not be an incumbent officer of the accredited professional organization, accredited integrated professional organization, Pursuant to EO number 496. Number three, qualification for examination, correction and the reference to section 30 on reciprocity. It should be section 31 instead. Number four, on section 21, registration without examination. Clarification is sought on what is being contemplated in the last paragraph on section 21, where all qualified applicants must apply for registration within two years from the effectivity of the implementing rules and regulation of this app. Thereafter, anyone who wants to be exempted will have to take the examination and uh, those who are exempted under section 26 of uh, this app. Uh, the last line is uh, for uh, addition to the paragraph. Uh, section 23, revocation or suspension of the certificate of registration, correction and the reference to section 22, except number three thereof. It should be section 20, 22, except C thereof. Uh, on the re repealing clause, the PRC interposes no objection on this portion of the repealing clause. All laws, decrees, executive orders, rules and regulation or parts thereof which are in conflict with the provision of this act are hereby re repealed or modified accordingly. And the please add, provided however that nothing in this act shall be construed as, as repealing or amending any portion 
of the laws of other professions regulated by the Commission. And the Board of Medical Technology also uh, would like to uh, correct on the scope of practice, uh, letter G, teaching microbiology uh, subject, that this portion be rephrased because microbiology is also a sub uh, major subject of medical technology profession. And letter uh, H, um, uh, on the scope of practice, employment with the government, to have this deleted because it is not in the same uh, purview as the other scope of practice. Uh, thank you very much the, for the opportunity to uh, speak of our position paper. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Please uh, submit your position paper ng uh, yung PRC sa ating committee. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, ma'am. May we also hear from Dr. Uh, Virginia Cuevas, Chair uh -huh. of the Philippine Academy of Microbiology and other stakeholders. Uh, good afternoon po, Senator Bong Rebilla. Uh, good afternoon po, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Wendell Rivera, Microbi uh, Professor of Microbiology of UP Diliman, will speak on behalf of the Philippine Academy of Microbiology in okay, response you're, to... You're recognized. Go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, Honorable uh, Senator uh, Rivilla. Uh, I will read the position paper of the Philippine Academy of uh, Microbiology on the proposed uh, Senate Bill 1058, sponsored by Honorable Senator uh, Juan Miguel Subiri. As advocate of the professionalization of microbiology in the country, the Philippine Academy of Microbiology, or PAM, fully supports the approval of SB 1058 and HB 8835. The approval of this bill will uh, give microbiologists their specific realms in the industry, academe, and research. The regulation of the microbiology profession will provide a standardized system a set of established rules and regulations that will be followed for the practice of this field in our country, which will be applicable in various uh, industries and purposes as needed. Number two, the PRC Managed Licensure Examination will push higher education institutions or HEIs into setting higher standards of teaching microbiology. This standardization will ensure that graduates from all HEIs offering microbiology degree programs, tracks or courses are equally equipped with the knowledge and skill set uh, needed for the industry and research, the academe and other sectors which require the services of a certified microbiologist. Number three, the masses will become familiar with this field of science, thereby uh, kindling their interest in microbiology, and this may increase the number of incoming college students who are interested to pursue this field. Consequently, this increasing demand may lead to additional HEIs that will offer this program. And as a result, an increase in the number of enrollees and graduates will be expected, producing a highly competent pool of professionals that could keep pace with the demanding workforce locally. Number four, more experts deployed in the field means more stringent monitoring of uh, product quality and safety, ensuring um, globally competitive services and products, more opportunities for innovations and product development, more high quality uh, applied research, and more academics to pass on knowledge and skill set to microbiology students. Number five, uh, more job opportunities will be open for microbiologists as companies and institutions would prefer to hire PRC certified microbiologists to ensure competence and quality of work. Number six, microbiologists in the field will be compensated accordingly, thus ensuring a high productivity and quality of services, as well as a lower probability of going overseas to seek for better pay. So the promotion of the practice of microbiology as a regulated profession in the country will catalyze the development and expansion of the Philippines as a progressive hub for industry, academe, and research in the biological sciences and biotechnology. It will empower uh, microbiology professionals with the capacity for invention and technological innovation, as well as the management of microbiological hazards and bio-risk containment. 
Thus, a robust uh, microbiology profession is a crucial need for the technological advancement, a sustainable development, environmental, and human health of a rapidly growing nation such as the Philippines. The proposed bill would greatly help address future pandemic situations. Science will always be an excellent tool which will aid the government in every uh, challenge that we face. In this regard, the Philippine Academy of Microbiology strongly urge for the passage of the microbiology bill SB 1058 and HB 8835. Thank you very much, Paul. Hey, uh, thank you very much, Wendell. And uh, pakigaw naman po natin si Dr. Gabriel uh, Barlongan, ang uh, DOH. Doctor, you are now recognized. Dr. Yes, Barlongan. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Bong. Okay. Uh, for in behalf of the Department of Health, um, the Department of Health supports Senate Bill Number One Zero Five Eight and House Bill Number Eight Eight Three Five that seeks to regulate the profession and overall practice of microbiology in the Philippines. As technical developments and changes in the landscape of microbiology arise amidst the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, policy advancements are both opportune and critical to the achievement of the new normal, wherein microbiology practice is standardized across the individual, institutional, and community levels. This will enable the state to exercise its enduring commitment to the principle of promoting and protecting the highest attainable standard of health for the Filipino people and to ensure an effective regulatory system guaranteeing the delivery of quality technical services to assure safety and quality of commodities, prevent transmission of diseases caused by microorganisms in various populations, render evidence-based decisions through patient-centered research, and safeguard the environment for the general public despite the evolving circumstances. Further, this will become a platform for strategic advancement of universal healthcare by regulating the quality of education of microbiologists and ensuring effective professional certification and regulation for a more synergistic approach towards improved health outcomes. With this, the DOH respectfully recommends the following for consideration in the final design of the bill. First, to include public health microbiology in terms of practice, provided that public health microbiology is excluded from the definition and scope of medical microbiology. This is to highlight the valuable contribution of microbiologists in advancing public health by supporting the provision of epidemic intelligence, monitoring emerging threats, and facilitating the evaluation of effective interventions. Second, harmonize the terms and scope of microbiology practice with the current existing global qualification standards. This will allow the domestic standardization to evolve at a pace that parallels international counterparts. This alignment promotes transnational national recognition of the value and comparability of domestic qualifications, supporting the mobility of Filipino microbiology students and professionals as a transformative component of both healthcare and economic globalization. Third, clarify if the scope of practice of microbiology professionals will include the roles relevant to active surveillance of infectious diseases, or to include a provision for the Professional Regulatory Board for Microbiology to conduct a sunset review every five years or as the need arises for purposes of ensuring that the law is implemented consistently, non-discriminatorily, and responsive to contemporary challenges and conditions of the society. Fifth, to include a provision for upgrading of training facilities and clinical microbiology laboratories in schools and hospitals with support from the DOSD and establishing mechanisms for partnerships to provide students with adequate related learning experience. And lastly, to consult with different government agencies such as the Department of Budget Management and Civil Service Commission for updating or creating position classification and qualification standards for microbiologists and also with the community uh, and with the also with the commission on higher education for the development of policy standards and guidelines for microbiology programs as a separate discipline. respectfully submitted to the chair thank you hey thank you dr uh, burlong and to abbreviate uh, our proceedings uh Pakisabit talang sa committee yung mga position papers of uh, of those stakeholders na hindi pa po na kapagsalita 
Okay na po ba ito? And uh, may, T, may TWG naman tayo so we can proceed with our next agenda. Okay. Um, ito nga uh, part 3. To... Yes, yes ma'am. You're recognized ma'am. Uh, permission to speak, Senator. Yes, go ahead ma'am. Uh, ma Virginia. We have already uh, submitted and favorably acted upon on the recommendations of DOH because we receive a copy and also that of the PRB of MedTech. All the recommendations are already incorporated in the present version, the new version of 10, Senate Bill 1058. And we have submitted this version, latest version, to Attorney Jane Arzadon. Jane Thank Arzadon. you. I uh, will take note of that. Uh, thank you, Ma'am Virginia. Okay, so let's proceed to our part uh, part three ng uh, itong ating physical therapy. So, With maraming salamat. To, oh, yes. To speak, sir, please. Okay, Ma'am, uh, go I, ahead. Uh, I was also asked, sir, by uh, by Chair Technical Committee for MedTech Education to say a few words in their behalf because okay. the chairman uh, uh, had problem with connection. Uh from, from the Chair Technical Committee for MedTech Education, uh, a position paper will be respectfully um, submitted. Um, excuse me, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, tinatakal po natin ngayon is microbiology. So, Opo. about... Oh, it's still Opo, about micro microbiology. It's still ma microbiology. Okay, Opo. you may proceed. Sorry, sorry. Opo. Sorry to interrupt. A position paper will be respectfully submitted after consolidating the comments from the members of the Chair TCMTE. A technical working group will be greatly appreciated and that uh, the uh, TCMTE will be uh, part of it to thresh out the possible encroachment to the practice of microbiology by medical technologies. To cite a few, Article 2A on teaching, article on teaching microbiology because microbiology is a major uh, part of the practice of uh, medical technology and Article 3, Section 10 on powers of the board, monitoring establishments and uh, higher institution. Because uh, MedTech also uh, do this. Thank you very much, sir. In lang po. Okay, mom, thank you very much. So, so let's proceed to our next agenda. So maraming salamat po sa lahat ng ating uh, resource persons para sa microbiology bill. Tumungo naman po tayo ngayon sa mga panukalang batas na nagdala yung i-regulate ang practice ng uh, physical therapy sa ating uh, bansa. Ang uh, Professional Regulatory Law o PRL ng Physical Therapy o PT kasama ng Occupational Therapy or OT na naisa batas Ay sa batas na noong 1969 pa sa ilalim ng Republic Act number no. 5680. Sa loob ng maraming taon, ito ay uh, naging gabay ng ating mga PT at OT in the exercise of their profession. Noong 2018 ay uh, isinabatas ang Republic Act 11241 o ang Philippine OT Law which among others establishes a separate professional regulatory board or PRB for OT. Ngunit hanggang ngayon ay uh, magkasama pa rin ang PRB, ng PT or at uh, OT sa ilalim ng Professional Regulatory Commission o PRC. With the uh, with the enactment of a measure that will uh, provide a clearer structure for the separate uh, PRB of uh, OT and PT as well as uh, regulations on on the practice of PT as profession independent and uh, distinct from OT mas magig uh, mas magiging maayos at uh, epektibo po ang uh, pagpapalawig natin ng mga profesyon na ito at ang uh, pagtugon natin sa kanilang mga pangangailangan ito po ang uh, layunin ng mga bills na nakahain ngayon sa atin no at uh, mula sa dating iisang PRL, ang panukalang Philippine Physical Therapy Law, ang uh, kukumpleto 
ila naging pilay o bitin na PRL. Maari po ba nating pakinggan ang PRC o ang OT and uh, PTPRB para sa maikling uh, overview ng kasalukuyang kalagayan nila at kung ano ang uh, maitutulong ng mga panukalang batas na tinatalakay natin. Sige uh, po, um, uh, sa PRC po, Commissioner Cueto, uh, you're now recognized. Commissioner? Yeah, I think you're... On Thank the... you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Senator, go ahead, go ahead. Senator Bob Revilla. We have already submitted our position paper, but let me call on the chair of the Professional Regulatory Board of Physical Therapy to present the salient features of the position paper. Thank you, sir. Okay. What about Mr. Michael Gabilo? Uh, of Philippine uh, Physical Therapy Association. You're now recognized. Michael Gabilo. Uh, um, yeah, you may present. Sorry. Okay, you may proceed. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. I'm one. Sorry, may I speak? Okay. Senator? Yes, this is Dr. Apollian Escano, the chairman of the of the Professional Regulatory Board of Physical Therapy and Occupational Therapy of the PRC. Could you hear me well? Yeah, okay. Thank you, sir. Um, on behalf of the PRC and the Board of Physical Therapy, a good afternoon to all senators and to Commissioner Cueto and the other commissioners here. On behalf of the PRC and the Board of Physical Therapy and Occupational Therapy, we would like to state our support for Senate Bill 1093 and House Bill 9216. Presently, we're functioning on the Republic Act 5680. Uh, mainly the physical therapists are functioning under the Republic Act 5680 or still the Physical Therapy and Occupational Therapy Law of 1969. So it's more than 50 years old, as you mentioned, Senator Revilla. But in 2018, Republic Act 11241 was enacted. And this is the Occupational Therapy Law. So essentially, as you said, um, they have separated from us the, the, the OT profession. Um, our position paper is a bit our position paper is a bit long, so I will not read it. Um, but I think um Mom Jane Arzadon has it, as she mentioned. Um, and we stated that physical therapy and occupational therapy are very different professions. And we are hoping the one for PT will also be passed with your help. There are just some points that we wish to revise if possible and if it's amenable to the, to the senators. And these are all in the position papers. They're, they're just small salient points and I, I do not wish to read them all. Uh, if you'd like to ask naman po questions, I'm, I'm available. Thank you for the chance to speak and comment on this bill. Thank you, senators. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Anyway, we're uh, meron naman tayong technical working group to work on this, no? So, para mas speed up na natin yung ating hearing. So, let's now hear Mr. Ano, Michael Gabilo. So, okay, go, go ahead, yeah. uh, Mr. Yeah. Michael Good Gabilo. Good afternoon, Paul. Uh, Philippine Physical Therapy Association. Good afternoon, Senator. Speed up kayo, eh. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this will be also short, uh, um, Senator, uh, since PPTA has already forwarded the um, its position statement to your office, as well as uh, relevant um, documents, uh, such as a comparative uh, matrix uh, showing some salient features of the House Bill um, 9216 and the Senate Bill 1093. Um, I just would like to manifest uh, some uh, things. Uh, uh, as you have already mentioned that we have an existing 53-year-old law uh, governing the or covering the practice of the physical therapy. Our organization feels that the provision of the House version of the PT bill, that is House Bill number 9216, are best suited to achieve the goals and objectives of the proposed measure, which is to update the current law governing the physical therapy profession and make it responsive to the changes, not just in the past 53 years, since the enactment of RA 5680, 
but as well as for the future. We are more we in the Philippine Physical Therapy Association are more willing and ready to cooperate with the Senate leadership, the chair, and the members of the Senate of Committee on Civil Service, Government Reorganization, and PRC, and um, together also with the office of the good Senator Senator Lapid, and uh, towards the refinement the, towards the refinements of the physical therapy bill to ensure for the final measure will be truly effective and beneficial, not just only for the physical therapy profession, but for the entire nation as well. Thank you very much for your kind attention, and we look forward to the technical working group meetings. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you for a very informative and enriching discussion regarding the PT bills. We will now discuss the fourth cluster of uh, of bills in our agenda, which is the repeal of Medical Act of 1959. Uh, just by looking uh, at the age of the laws that are regulating the practice of medicine in the country, walang duda na kailangan na itong uh, pag-aralan muli at uh, i-update to ensure that they are relevant and responsive to the changing times. This is uh, an endeavor that uh, we cannot compromise because uh, we entrust to them our health and lives and there's nothing more we can do but to protect and empower them and their profession. Uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the, the doctors together with the, with the other healthcare workers, we are, uh, uh, workers are, are our soldiers in this battle against the the novel virus, no? Sila, silang na lumalaban talaga. Ang mga doktor po ay walang sawang nagbibigay ng uh, serbisyo sa ating mga kababayan. Ngayon, uh, higit kailanman, dapat natin pag-aralan muli ang mga batas kaugnay sa regulasyon ng medical profession. Bago ang ating mga katanungan, pakinggan muna natin ang PRC o ang uh, PRB ng uh, medicine para sa kanilang uh, overview ng bill. At... Uh, Pagkatapos ay ang uh, mga organizations ng mga doktor para sa kanilang uh, position at uh, proposals. So pakinggan po natin ang PRC through Commissioner Jose Cueto. Sir? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me request your permission for me to call on the chairperson of the Professional Regulatory Board of Medicine to present. Yes, go ahead, go ahead, sir. Decision paper. Honorable Eleanor Al Almoro. Um, good afternoon um, to all the senators who are present. Good afternoon, Commissioner Cueto. Um, I would like to read uh, uh, the the following for the uh, for this meeting. The Professional Regulation Commission conveys its full support for the passage of the bill that will update the regulatory framework for the practice of the medical profession in the country. It cannot be denied that uh, medicine is one of the most dynamic and fast evolving profession as demonstrated by the many advances and breakthroughs that came through the areas of diagnosis, treatment and management of diseases and the promotion of health in general over the past few years and decades. While the law Republic Act 2382 has been partially amended twice, in one in 1965 and another in 1969. The constant and oftentimes unanticipated developments, whether locally or internationally, relating to public health and the management of diseases have made it more compelling for the government to review and assess the effectiveness, responsiveness, and relevance of the professional regulation, especially in this crucial time of the COVID pandemic. Um, dear Senator, uh, uh, there are uh, a few um, more comments, no? but uh, maybe we can reserve it for the technical working group. Okay. S Senator. So Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Sige. So you'll just discuss it. Those uh, thing TWG. No. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, let us uh, also hear from Dr. Benito Atienza, Philippine uh, of, uh, President of Philippine Medical Association, PMA. 
Doctor, Doctor Chensa, you are now recognized. Anjan po ba kayo? Good afternoon po. Um, Hi, good afternoon, Dr. Doctor. Chairman po and uh, Board of Medicine, including po our Commissioner, Dr. Cueto. I will read po the, uh, we support the bill except for the following uh, section. Uh, section 4 of the proposed law it, it stated the Integrated National, uh, National Professional Organization for Position or Impact shall be created. There is no need to create a, uh, uh, this entity. What we need to be done is merely for the PRC to recognize instead of create the Philippine Medical Association as impact. Second, the creation of Medical Education Council when we there is all already the Commission of Higher Education. Then, Section 27, Creation of Postgraduate Medical Education Council. As previously stated, there is no need for this body. This is just an additional expense on the part of the government. The specialty societies have performed the task of associ associated with the certifying examination and this has been accepted by the public. What should be done is that the PRC should confer recognition on specialty societies who can give certifying examinations. Once a doctor passes the certifying examinations given by the specialty societies, the INPAP or the Philippine Medical Association and the PRC should just recognize the doctor as a specialist. And the third, it is stated that the PRC and the board shall recognize in PAP and we favor this one. What should be done is just the recognition of the existing association, such as the Philippine Medical Association, and not a creation. Section 54A, the failure to have an ID is a criminal offense punishable by imprisonment of one year to five years or fine of two 100,000 to 500,000 or both. The crime of no ID should be deleted. Yun lang po, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, you uh, Thank you, Dr. Achensa, uh, for your specific uh, inputs. Uh, uh, we will take note of that po. Uh -huh. So, meron, po pa, meron pa po bang uh, gusto magbigay ng kanilang uh, posisyon sa bill na ito? Baka meron, you just... Uh, Okay, kung wala na. So, we had a very fruitful discussion today. No? Again, kay Senator Pia, thank you, no? Uh, siya yung nauna kanina. Talagang didetalya niya yun eh. So, I just want to remind everybody to uh, submit all the data and documents that will be uh, helpful to the committee uh, in further studying these bills. As manifested earlier, the committee will conduct technical working group meetings for each cluster para masusi pa nating mahimay ang mga panukalang batas at uh, mabalangkas po natin ang, ang bill na ito na, na i-report natin ng committee. So again, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. I, I know na medyo mahaba itong ating hearing. So thank you very much at uh, our hearing is now adjourned. Mabuhay po kayo and good afternoon. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, well, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.